the Tuffy Blind Spots Pillar 8. These are the gateway to your soul lessons and your personality lessons and probably one of the things that truly brings you to awakening. Enjoy the little baby squawking. And there's very few of them this year. The, bu the bulk of this video is not going to have animals. The, actually the bulk of this video is at a very different pace to my normal video. So I'm out in the bush, I'm taking my time and I'm explaining the dynamics of the hardest things you will face, your blind spots, because they're tough. You don't want to hear your blind spots unless you're dead serious and you know what you want and you've 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 got the you've got the guts to take a good look. And I, I speak fairly slowly. Uh, there's, there's a lot of space there for you to practice your presence as best as you can. So when I jump to the bush and I got my my red woolly jumper on, really monitor your presence practice if that's what you want and that's what you're doing about it with your structures of correct presence practice or presence whatever version of presence you do and notice the evidence. I, I make a reasonable amount of prompts to ask you to be aware of body parts and what's going on. Notice if you do that or not. Evidence. All the healing courses, meditations, correct presence practice course in the laws of grace, I prompt a lot more to give you an idea of, you know, to really drill the habit in so it settles into your neurology. So in that video I'm talking about blind spots. Um, and that was before I had my sinus operation, which I had three weeks ago. Oh man. Well, the difference is literally like a massive awakening because of the, the fog that vanished out of my body from having some toxicity removed that's inside my body. So yeah, was I feeling great? No, but I talk about how to be with blind spots. So in, in chronic health conditions, are uh, part of that process for you. If you've got a chronic health condition. Hopefully you don't. If you're under 35 years old and you haven't got a health condition yet, enjoy the fact that you're young and vital. <laughs> Please do. Because things go south when you hit 35. That's why there aren't many professional athletes that get past 35. I mean we've got a couple of world leading ones at the moment with, with Rafael Nadal who's now got foot paralysis and who would know if Roger Federer is going to get back to another Grand Slam. Tiger Woods, he's on the way out, he's due to his age, but I mean he's come back. So, you know, health, that's a biggie. Uh, but in terms of blind spots, they're tough. Because most people don't want to see them. And if you want to truly awaken, it's required. So I talk about some of that in terms of what you face and some of the phases, you know, like the denial phase, the big long river in Egypt. Oh, I don't do that. I've got friends around me that get really pissed off when I use the word blind spot. Oh, don't say that. I don't want to hear you talking about blind. Well, if you don't want to open your eyes and see what's stopping you, then. What do you want? Well, you're not doing what's required. Blind spots are your gifts to the world because that's where your wisdom comes through. The Advanced Inquiry page two talks uh, about those things that happen before you can re really truly start to work on your blind spots. So I'll get in the bush bush part of it very shortly but what I do want to say is the structure always applies pillar number seven so regardless of your phase of awakening as you start working through blind spots because you've been given external feedback that's why I recommend coaching that's why I've got a coach she shoves my blind spots in my face all the time 
for a current blind spot I'm working with at, at the moment and this will cover other topics within this website and the, and the healing courses so at the moment I'm working with a partially activated DNA gene that's really holding me back and I can tell you I had my coaching session a week ago and I still can't cognize the process I, I can sense the symptoms of it happening the emotional symptom being frustration which is what drives this dynamic within myself I've got to address because it leads to stuff not working out your blind spots teach you skills just like chronic health conditions do so this particular genetic thing drives stuff drives manifestation drives situation drives me to attract certain people into my life for the repeated lessons until I get it and I'm still having trouble you know cognizing it to the point where I can process it through and and, um, and I'll be doing some DNA work with that using the half timeline process there are ways to work with DNA I've run a number of workshops on it um, they have been teaching me about DNA work since the year 2000 the year 2000 I reversed a lactose intolerance gene using uh, the half timeline process so the manifestation of this blind spot has DNA implications so you know in terms of changing a belief it's more than a belief it's physical proteins so I create my reality with my belief yeah what's the evidence the evidence doesn't stack up from what I can see because changing a belief is easy yeah you just hold it in presence and realize that it's a tooth fairy that's what happens with a five-year-old eh? oh you mean Santa Claus isn't real oh that's right because houses these days don't have chimneys so how does Santa Claus get in the house does a five-year-old ask that one actually they might that's the funny thing eh? but because they trust you like your unconscious mind trusts you pillar five which is your habit machine for correct present practice wow you know changing a belief is just really easy and if it's stuck in there with an emotion i.e. emotions are glue you know you just got to feel that emotion fully yeah you got to feel the anger fully you got to feel the grief fully you got to feel the bleep 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 fully <laughs> so it releases out of your cells and everywhere else it's not just a belief thing so blind spots yeah you'll want to deny it you get frustrated about it you'll justify it and all that sort of stuff and that's mentioned in the advanced inquiry page and inquiry is a skill you grow a bit like your law zero you're gonna give me a kiss hey no so here we go practice your presence yeah I speak slower yep I was holding the divine yum yum whilst <laughs> whilst I was feeling crap <laughs> allowing what is man that's as vague as we get because that means you are concurrently experiencing everything inside of you as well as enduring everything outside of you be it lockdowns world war three economic depressions relationship issues while you're here so we're off to the bush let's dig into blind spots a little bit more blind spots pillar eight because it's number eight that means it precedes number nine which is common sense hey eh? this relationship is quite important because what is a blind spot it's something that you can't see or you know because you're not seeing it therefore it's unconscious and it is a habit often a default habit that you act out unconsciously unless you're in the learning curve 
where you are aware of it happening and, and you are in some respects quite powerless to reverse it. And that is the journey, the healing journey with inquiry, healing, being conscious, retraining, i.e. pillar one, correct presence practice, while you pillar two allow all of you to still do the bad habit without beating yourself up too much. <laughs> because, and if you are beating yourself up, great. Be aware of it, allowing pillar two, all of you, which includes all of those nasty little cycles. And this is the aspect of, you know, allowing all of you, i.e. self-love, unconditional acceptance of, hey, this, this crap habit is happening. And if you've got this far into the video and you're seeing these videos, then yeah, you, you're, you're the sort of person that, that has the motivation, i.e. what do you want, what you're going to do about it, to address your blind spots. So this is the thing with blind spots. They are your life lessons and your soul lessons for you to come home to everything. Full blazing, phase four, abiding, matured, abiding, awakening and beyond. And regardless of your level, structure applies. So uh, all masters on this planet still have blind spots. That's what they're working on. You know, the big teachers, the amazing ones. <laughs> Not me, I'm just, I'm just a beginner compared to some of them. And I'm facing blind spots. Absolute crackers, thanks to my coach pointing out things for me to look at and decide for myself how to, one, interpret what she says and two, how I dig into that. So that again comes back to what do I want, what am I going to do about it? And that's a question I ask myself and I'm asking you to ask yourself. Noticing your hands. And this is the thing, eh? This framework and the nine pillar framework is, is pretty solid. Yeah, I could say and bring in different aspects like the motivation, what do you want, what you're doing about it. So assuming you're motivated, that means you're willing to look and examine. And that's the tricky, the crucial aspect with a blind spot. Am I willing to take a look? And how long you look will relate to your motivation, your motivation multiplier in the laws of grace. Right. So, for example, for me, when my coach points out something, um, I know it's a good blind spot when I have trouble cognizing it. <laughs> because most humans won't attempt to cognize, i.e. mentally understand, emotionally understand, and then observe the bad habit in action in life just any second of the day it can be running am i aware of that are you aware of your hands backside and behind your tummy so as you do that what are the feelings sensations and emotions going on in there what is the shape of your inner body just be aware of it. So when I say that, do you do it? This is an indicator of your application and your motivation. So how are your hands? What's going on in your inner body, step two? 
because regardless of your phase of awakening it's still the same process and that's what I'm certainly experiencing with myself over the last few years <laughs> to take myself deeper because I do want more I want to deepen more and to share that clarity as much as I can feel what's going on in your legs in your pelvis you know the lower part of your torso so as your neurology opens up your capacity to sense all of this stuff and function improves right because it's all a continuum from phase one got it lost it through to well you know well and truly six years into non-abiding transpersonal for me at the moment and it's still deepening and becoming more stable as I clear out non-presence habits blind spots that put me uh, in a less better place and as I learn therefore gain the wisdom therefore pillar nine common sense the outcomes of those blind spots which with hindsight it's like yep <laughs> hindsight is fantastic and that's when it concretes in so you can lay that default habit so it becomes operational throughout life then you can endure the less pleasant aspects of life for instance for me I've got some teeth issues which have created quite nasty sinus issues which are now leading to uh, brain fog and inner body ache it's actually becoming an inner body ache and I'm I've now got two referrals to the Royal Melbourne Dental Hospital to get some action done and I'm going to have to have a second operation on my sinuses to clear out the gunk so my presence practice gets me in my body right pillar one step one body inner body does it feel nice no <laughs> So my system is operating in a sort of energetic ache and, and a, a fuzz and you will hear my language like I can't finish sentences sometimes now that's neurological as a result of too much infection which is taxing all of my organs my liver because everything's everything is connected right <coughs> So as I bite, you know, both sides ache because of the teeth abscesses. Well, and they're above the teeth, they're in, they're in the skull, which is filling up my sinuses. So that is there. Am I with it? As I feel that, instead of going asleep and doing avoidance habits, be that... <coughs> just wasting time dawdling distraction daydreaming right we all have our avoidances be it food video games Facebook it's just a matter of well, what the distraction is and how much it will hinder and and laws of success number six is balance <laughs> is you know you can't be a goody two shoes 24 7 but you build the base and you operate as best as you can to hold your pillar one your correct presence practice as viscerally and consistently as you can
which is the entire module two and three of the Laws of Grace. Feeling your backside and your hands, your legs. What's your inner body doing now? So what's going on for you, the nice uh, phenomena, i.e. if it's not nothingness, then it's phenomena, eh? There's phenomena and there's noumenon, which is step forward, divine, nothing, everything. So there is always phenomena. It's, it's, a, it's a, a personal experience and you can call it a judgment. Yes, we do need to judge. Let's get rid of that nonsense that judgments are bad. If it triggers bad emotions and bad feelings and all that sort of stuff for you, then yeah, that's something for you to address. But that's what is required for you to be human to function in society. So, does my body feel 100% great? No, it doesn't. Uh, but the step four, the divine, is certainly here for me. <laughs> Which makes the not nice experiences that's going on inside of this body because of it fighting the infections through lack of proper dental care, basically, and not knowing what the impacts of that were when it should have been addressed is having consequences. So I'm here with that. And it adds a... like my shoulders are doing, kind of adds a... an unpleasantness into <laughs> this. So allowing what is means you are here with the stuff you don't like, the resistances of what you don't like, while you're experiencing the dichotomy of your presence practice. So as you get into step three, just presence, which is allowing everything to be as it is, as best as you can, and allowing your resistances as best as you can, so you're not beating yourself up, supporting your pillar five unconscious mind hey buddy it's okay and that's what i'm saying to my uncon unconscious mind hey buddy it's okay to feel like crap <laughs> so these blind spots these uh, whatever level, uh, in my case physical, is impacting the rest of my steps to correct presence practice. Oh, hear that bird, isn't it divine? And there's a yellow-breasted robin there in the tree staring at me. What are the sounds in your environment as you be aware of your physicality and step to your inner body. And has that shifted since this video started? It will have if you're applying your attention correctly as you allow this information to come into you. So as the neurology adjusts, as your unconscious mind and its habit processes improve to your what do you want <laughs> it will change and the new default setting will come into being so with your blind spots uh, the willingness to truly examine, to use your success journal, rules of evidence, pillar three, 
to get really clear on, on how they operate. And to be okay with the mind dialogue, your conscious mind, your egoic mind, what it has to say about it, because it needs to be heard. This is why the three brains, obviously this one and its chatter machine, this one, the unconditional love one, your heart, the gateway to all of you, down into your body, etheric body, physical body, and everything below your heart, i.e. solar plexus, your emotional identity, your gut, or which is your gut brain, the third brain, heart being the second brain, eh? 40, 40,000 neurons fairly early on there in the, in the fetus growth. So when they're all aligned, through you doing this process, then the integration can happen and your practice will deepen and the problem will hopefully resolve depending on where it's got to and at what level. So, you know, at the spiritual levels, your connection may improve. Step four, you'll get more step four, more ongoingly through your day and it will be more visceral. Even in extreme circumstances, which you've heard me talk about plenty. Your presence will be more allowing of it being here, even if it feels unpleasant, like the, the energetics and, and, and the unpleasantness and the physical symptomology of what's going on with, with my teeth and, and sinuses and skull as a result of infection. It's a physical thing. It needs to be removed. <laughs> uh, energetic healings can sort of help, but at the physical level, something needs to be removed. And then down to the physical level, as the rest of me, because of my correct presence practice being relaxed and here, means there's a bigger everything to soothe what's going on within me. So check that for yourself. Arms, legs, tummy. How's your inner body? So with the blind spots, when someone points one out, do you choose to check it? Because the human tendency is to say, nah, that's not how it is and the mind will give reasons because there's an investment in that unconsciously which has been designed to help pretty much prime directive number one of the unconscious mind to keep you safe even if it is doing uh, destructive things to your life and the people around you and society and the planet back to your forearms So if you are choosing this path, which is why you're watching this video, when someone points something out, check it out. And because you now understand this process, it doesn't mean other people will. So again, you know, I've got people around me that just are telling me not to talk about blind spots because they don't want to see them. Rather than give me some evidence or, or actually willing to acknowledge and discuss how their blind spot, through their evidence, isn't a blind spot. This is the point. This is pillar three rules of evidence. And, and as you cut into the layers of a blind spot, you will weed out your motivation and your reasoning f for having that. Because 
because there's always good reasons. <laughs> We've got currently a big global one going on. A certain individual thinks that slaughtering children and blowing up hospitals and train stations with civilians is a great way for his country to be protected. In his mind, that's the right thing to do. That is a blind spot. It's very easy to see that from outside. And those that are under that person's influence, because of media control or whatever, they might not see enough evidence to see what's going on therefore support that cause and believe that it's true so that's an external reflection of a blind spot regardless of what the outcome is <laughs> in a year or two's time hopefully after it settles and we know what the outcomes are but at this point in time it's a blind spot a really big one with global ramifications at all sorts of levels. This is the power of a blind spot, eh? Common sense. So how do we apply that to us? To ourself, primarily. And that's how um, we can stay in balance as a person, as a member of a community, be that a family, your workplace, your country, <laughs> how do you stay in balance with this process to bring yourself to this place of deeper levels of awakening as you journey down this path? It's quite a balancing act because it's, it's really easy to uh, get unbalanced, feel. So with your blind spots, if you've had one pointed out to you, check Pillar 3 Rules of Evidence. If you're not going to check the Rules of Evidence, and then that is a huge, huge sign that it's operating. The blind spot is operating, it's holding you back. Catching it is evidence that you're starting to open your eyes to it, right? You are becoming awake rather than asleep. No, no, I don't do that. You'll have plenty of people around you that operate this way. So you can learn to observe it with others. It's always easier seeing it in another. Although, of course, it's our own personal perceptions as to if that is a blind spot or not for them. Again, check the rules of evidence. Blind spots are the key. Because it takes the unconscious, pillar five, into consciousness, Pillar one, correct presence practice, so you are here with it, allowing everything to be, even if it's yucky, painful, hard, uncomfortable. And the willingness to do that does come down to what do you want, what you're going to do about it. So as you work through your physical ailments, your mental ailments, your emotional ailments, <laughs> As long as you're doing your pillar one, correct presence practice, because you're checking the steps, which is giving you the evidence. And if you're doing it correctly, it's allowing it all to be here in the consciousness that you are, regardless of what step in the four steps you get to. Eh? Am I aware of my hands and my feet right now? Are you? And you can always do it more. <laughs> uh, 
This is uh, certainly well and truly into my second year of testing this nine pillar framework and checking the steps over and over and over, even though the abidance of presence has been with me now over 14 years at this point in time in 2022. And I'm seeing the benefits of that. Which to me gives the evidence that, you know, if I keep checking in and doing this nine pillar framework, I keep checking in with my steps. How's those hands and those feet? How's behind your tummy and your emotional center? How's your inner body expanded, contracted? What shape is it? We get into this in the laws of grace. It keeps deepening. And that's the incredible thing about it. There is no, I'm there now. I am there now because I'm choosing to be aware of that through doing correct presence practice. This applies to your blind spots the toughie. <laughs> I mean law zero is incredibly brutal and most people do not get past pillar four. Which is why the statistics of phase three, well phase two non-abiding people is very rare. But it's swift if you do this process because that's what you do want. Therefore, you're applying your volitional attention, your time and your resources. Resources are always an outcome of your time and your attention because that's how you get your money and therefore you apply that money to make your life better in whatever way. Be that a car, coaching, cutting out time to hang out in places like this. <laughs> right? sitting just there against the tree in my campfire last night, I literally had a young, well I don't know if she's young, a female koala walk up to me. Never had a greeting with a koala at night time and she, and she licked my fingers. I've never had that happen either. That was a freaky experience. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so it's a learning process. How's your tummy? And how are you going to function with your next tasks or activities over the next hour as a human being and with your check-in process and as part of that check-in process with your blind spots are they are they operating can you feel them sense them so you can shift them And that will give you the evidence pillar three of, of how you're progressing. What I do want to say about blind spots is they can take a while. You know. So in terms of what do you want, what you're going to do about it, is one part of the foundational trinity. And how is that defined? So for me, the word home, because I defined it wrong when I was in the womb, I mean, my entire search, <laughs> my entire journey, uh, right up until recently, at the unconscious level, I've been aiming at the wrong thing, although I've still got to this place. But that particular blind spot has presented some very, very serious challenges throughout my life. Which, of course, as I've moved through it, has given me this sort of wisdom, which means these sorts of courses and the content and the websites are now here because I've had to 
master those processes. Uh, master meaning it's an ongoing process, it doesn't mean I'm there <laughs> or I've got to what I personally want or I think I personally want because I'm committed to the process, the structure checking in again as we hear the car revving Now, notice that, what step are you at, what's your step two inner body like, how's your presence that encapsulates your inner body and your physical body, noticing the nuances of your physical body and I've told you what mine feels like at the moment, it's not particularly nice. And is the step four here, it will be, it will happen as you deepen into the phases. And then when you need to go and do your human things, you do your human things with full resourcefulness and focus and just doing the ching ching ching, checking in as much as you can, as fast as you can, as frequently as you can. and that unconscious base will grow because that's what the phases of awakening are really it's, it's just deeply unconscious because everything, your neurology, your unconscious mind the ego is cleaned out of its bad habits because your ego is effectively just a boundary device where do I stop and start like you know I'm feeling hugely expanded but I know this setup here that's recording this device is not Jason person is it but my inner body certainly goes through it and the divine nothingness, step four certainly includes it and I'm okay with that and this environment is very safe for me to do that that's why I come here I put my time and my resources to coming to these places So there's less distraction, even the internet's terrible here, I've got a journey to where I can get the internet to check the weather or the rain radar or the news or emails or whatever. So I'm, I'm committing through being here to look at my current blind spots, my current edge of my learning, <laughs> my healing, so I can bring my body back to a much better place of health. So this video again has many many layers because I, I did bounce around a little bit but this is the thing it's it's all a cohesive whole and as you re-watch the video you'll get different insights jot them in your diary evidence is it coming through the gang gang parrots my inner child calls them squeaky door parrots because that's exactly what they sound like And the arbitrary measurements of how well you're doing, how well you're addressing your blind spot, you know, one to ten as we talk about in the laws of grace. 
the numbers are arbitrary, but that gives you a sense of commitment and activation. Therefore, it installs the habit unconsciously and into your neurology. So you can hold the levels, your desired outcomes in terms of your spiritual practice, process, and where you're moving to as a human being and a spiritual being. So again, I just want to affirm your blind spots are the key to your life path and your soul path. Yep, they feel like crap. <laughs> That's a technical word. But what's the bigger picture? As you hold this unpleasant process, this unpleasant dynamic with your blind spot, be it emotional, mental, physical, addiction stuff, health stuff, global stuff, financial stuff, family stuff, relationship stuff. It means you're moving towards what it is you want because you're doing something about it. I'll see you in the next video. I'm Jason for AwakenedEssence.com So I had to go? Did, did the prompting help? Were you able to stay present and bring yourself back over and over and over? Or did you get distracted? Are you not even seeing this part of the video because you gave up? That's evidence, eh? Hey? Yeah! Not that you'll be actually seeing it. Oh sweetie! You gonna come over? So blind spots are rippers. They will come from outside of you. That's why I do the coaching. Because I can see them, because I do the transpersonal thing, and blind spots will impact your capacity to do your presence practice correctly. So they're crucial. That's why I've had my coach every three weeks for the last 20 years. And every time I get slapped about, because she can, she can dig into me and, and say what's going on. She's very, very specific. down to the genetics level. I'll be able to help you with what I see and what I sense and, and the feedback and the questions that you have. Because we only ask questions because there's stuff behind it that means there's something going on. Hello darling. You gonna come over? Hey, you got your little crestie up. You're behaving like a little chicken. <laughs> Oh mate, what a fighter! I love these animals, they're just so funny. Does he remind you of any, any global dictator with what he just did? <laughs> if you want to know what your blind spots are, come into coaching. If you're seeing this next little bit that I'm going to say, if you sign up for the eight session coaching block, I'll give you a ninth, a ninth session for free. And put you in the Learn Whispering course, which I'm still developing and filming. Hello darling, you look very cute. You're a little bit timid, although you just absolutely bullied a cockatoo before. Actually, the reason I'm bleeding is because one of these guys bit me. They're fantastic biters. What do you want? What are you going to do about it? Did you hold your structures of presence? And how much, how well, how good? What dragged you away? If you examine your presence practice and, and what, what stops it and what makes it slip, then because you keep coming back, you will wear in the habit and your unconscious mind will adjust.
And if you really want it, you're going to now build some evidence. So you'll get out your success journal, your presence diary, and write in, oh, I watched Jason's video on blind spot examination for the first time, and yeah, my practice was two out of 10. Or it was awesome, or yeah, it helped. Perhaps I should listen to these videos more. Listen to them when I'm walking the dog, or catching the bus. Because that's what I did once I hit phase three of Biting Awakening and I moved to Melbourne away from my home and everything else. I did, I listened to Adjusanti every day when I was biking to work during lunch to hear the voice of someone who's not like the rest of Lost Society because Lost Society drags you down. They do. They do, that's why the Master Club's here for community and the coaching is here. Pillar 6, supporting things. And in the transpersonal video, I'll talk about why I went to India. Or I go and see Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev if he hits town, or Armada Hugging Sane, because it's energetic support. Doesn't mean I become a devotee. I'm not into the devotee thing. I just do coaching, because a guru can't give it to you, but their bandwidth can help. Hello, darling. I'm back for another fight. Hello? You gonna come over? You gonna take the seed and not bite my fingers? <laughs> he was strong enough to take on the cockatoo but too chicken to get some seed. Come on little fella. Oh wow. Notice the dynamics? Oh this little Corella, he's an absolute ripper of a fighter. He's going to take on this cockatoo, just watch. But he's too chicken to come over to my hand at the moment. You can come over, darling? He's got his little crest up, so he's in caution mode. Come on. There you go. Come and get some. You see, we have it machines, eh? So that little Corella is quite happy to take on a cockatoo. He's taken on about five cockatoos in the last five minutes. He's absolutely whipped them. Yeah, you're a, you're a master fighter, you are. Yeah, but he's freaked out about me. And when you talk to them and you look at them, they know. So he's very, very cautious, but he'll have a crack at this guy. And I can tell this parrot's one of, one of my birds. <laughs> Uh, and he just dealt to him. Come on. I think it might be patience. You're gonna come up, buddy. You coming up? Coming up? Come here, away from that little Corella. Yeah. See, the little little Corella lost against the long bill, and the long bills are really good fighters as well. So when you're whispering and you get to spend time with your animals you'll get to enjoy learning about the dynamics, like how the different birds fight is quite unique and, and it's got to do with, with their, their weapons and for parrots it's their feet but mostly their beak. So how they fight is related to their beak. So the long bill Corella will go like this with his head. He'll, he'll wiggle, his, wiggle his beak and he'll... Cockatoos are just their beaks, you know, these ones, cockatoos, because um, their beak's different, they just use their brute force and size. Long bill corallas use their long bill, and, and the little corallas are kind of like, you know, as you can see, they're sort of dancing, dancing Shaolin Kung Fu masters. You gonna come up, Red? I'm coming up. So the camera will probably catch the action. We're going to have a scrap here between a long bill and a... No, we're not. Sometimes I think I can predict what's going to happen, but with wildlife you generally can see. The Corella showed him off. Hello, darling. He's one of my friendly birds, I can tell. You coming up, bud? And this cockatoo's looking down thinking, nah, I'm not going to take on that Corella. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the sort of dynamics you'll get to watch and enjoy. It's, it's kind of fun to learn that. 
regardless of your animals, there will be dynamics within the species and between different species. Wow. It's pretty cool to watch it. Your tangles. You come over. Why don't you come over? <laughs> well, I hope the camera focused on him. So you would have got a good look at him then as he was getting ready to attack the cockatoo. Come on, you gonna come across? Instead of fighting, you come and have a feed. He's thinking about it. Come on. Do you want to come across over here? Hey? Eh? You gonna come across? Hey? Eh? Hello, Caramel. Caramel doesn't take nonsense, he's a, he, he's a right alpha bird, old Caramel. You watch, he'll, he'll boss everybody around. You're a thumper of a parrot, mate. And he doesn't get a lot of stuff from me, so I haven't, I haven't made him that size. See, he just nodded at the Corella and the Corella chickened off. <laughs> Are you Mr. Brown? Are you going from Mr. Brown to Mr. Caramel? Eh? Because Mr. Brown was the biggest bird in the park and I haven't seen, I can't say I've seen him, but Miss Brown also went from being brown to white with little bits of yellow on her. He's still brown, he's more caramelly, but he's got yellow on him too. So maybe that's Mr. Brown. Actually, it would be easy to tell because Mr. Brown was a bit of a pig. Are you a bit of a pig, Mr. Brown? You better tell by the way you, yeah, that might be Mr. Brown. This is the thing, eh, too, with the birds and the animals. Um, obviously birds change their plumage and what they're eating and stuff like that will affect the colour of their plumage. You know, what, what makes a flamingo pink? It's, it's the shrimp. It's the coloration of the shrimp. You know, when you, when you cook crustaceans like crabs and crayfish and shrimps. <laughs> I'm Jason for AwakenedEssence.com make contact if you want to have a quick chat or book a coaching session and have a longer session as a result. Caramel or perhaps Mr Brown.